below 15. Well, that's a poor mistake. Serving for the set. Last thing you want to do is start missing easy forehand volleys. There, you have to really time that well. 15.30, that means in a chance. grass that backhand volley even if it goes back to your opponent it's sliding away the cross-court backhand volley same as major he made that one said to Henman okay if you're good enough you're the winner. that this might be the moment when he breaks back. First break point he's had on the Henman, uh, on the Sampras serve since the 11th game of the first set. Sampras did the right thing, closed in. Tim really had a couple of options there. I was wondering where he was going. I don't think Sampras knew either. It was a tough shot, though, to get the thread that down the line. Back to Juice. Yes. That's a good serve. Yeah, that Sampras. Sampras was looking for the last point on that side. Got that one a little wider, and uh, with that slice, just kept going. Set point. <laughs> Game second set, Sampras. Six games to four. <laughs> one set all. So terrific application there from Sampras, who didn't play a good game, perhaps being his first final of this year. Final set. Uh, a tiny bit jittery. It happens to even the greatest champions. But he's now done that job, the first job, of getting himself back into the match. All to play for. Strings went on the return of serve. And he just decided to go in and he picked up the little uh, stabilizer that sits at the throat of the racket to prevent uh, vibration of the strings. A little dampener. And there is the broken string. But about all you can do, Pat, in these circumstances is to try and push the ball back and hope. There's not much you can do, the racket becomes like a trampoline, really springs off. Yeah. 
30 low. Sampras does use stringy, does stringy dragons very, very tightly with very fine string. Makes more strings than just about anybody I've ever seen. Like you get your strings for free, I tell you. Low enough and high enough for Hinman to be able to control that one. service game indeed just what the doctor ordered and at the moment uh, you you'd have to say this is a fine exhibition of grass court tennis from both of them it's been very good standard very good standard indeed not, not many unforced errors here and there plenty of forced ones because they're both forcing well aren't they but yes they're both serving very well as well Now, is there anything that either of them needs to change, or should they just go on doing the same things, remembering that we've only seen one service break in the entire match? Well, they've just got to keep waiting and uh, wait for the opportunity for second serves. Sampras has been returning well. The Henman's come up time. with a couple of good service games, which has got him back on track. And that's absolutely crucial for him to do that. Uh, I expect to see a very, very tight third set. Sampras, all players are bound to have a bit of loss of concentration. It's just a matter of how long they lose their concentration. Him and lost it for one game, lost his serve. Maybe Sampras lost his concentration um, in the last game by missing a couple of easy ones. Or maybe it's yet to come. Backhand volley under pressure, going cross court again. Skidding away, and then uh, has got a very, very good backhand down the line, as we've seen. If he can't control it, any players will be able to. by both men. Two love service games as the new balls are brought out. And with customary courtesy of showing your opponent that they are new.
dirty love. Sampras's racket head. Just pulling that across the court. Just a little flick of the wrist at the end. Oh. Oh. Body line has been good to Henman today. Just one spectacular backhand return that Sampras made. Generally speaking, it's tied him up. But it's this return of serve. Hanman can't really penetrate with his volley. Open stance there. Having to whip through the ball around the outside. Deuce. What's impressive is Henry is serving a very high percentage of first serves. Sampras is getting it back and he's getting the opportunity to have a go at the second shot. for it and too close for comfort. Two pals here are fencing for position, each one knowing the other's cape so well. And it's been noticeable once or twice, hasn't it? The wrong footing tactic has worked, particularly that cross court um, shot of Sampras on the forehand side. He's diverted occasionally down the line with Hemman moving <laughs> yes. across. Yeah. That's right. I've uh, th been thinking through this match who it would help benefit us. A bit surprised to hear that Henman has only won, apart from this first set, only won one set. Usually when you've got mates who play with Don't each know. other and, uh, regularly or team members for squads or whatever, usually it's very close because they know each other's weaknesses and uh, it would level out the, the play. So a top higher ranked player will struggle against a lower ranked mate because he knows his weaknesses. But, um, that doesn't, hasn't really happened, has it? Um, Sampras has been dominating the matchup so far in his career. Left for service. Come on, Sam! <laughs> but uh, on the grass, it's getting closer and closer. said that he'll play Davis Cup later this year against Australia shortly after Wimbledon in Boston. At the moment he said he doesn't want to play singles because Martin and Courier are the men in position.
first case yeah, well. of mates knowing each other's games. Was Henman obviously favours the down the line forehand. Here's the easier shot. Deciding to go the other way. Didn't need much pace in that at all and got past him. for that one down the middle. Read it early. Ah! Where Henman is standing now, right back, making sure he's going to make it this important moment, 15.30, make him play the return. Perfectly weighted shot that. Have a look at this, and he's moving forward to play, taking his body weight into it. And two break points. Not ready. Lucky for him, the Sampras serve was a was a ripper, that was an ace. That a little bit of excitement seeing that go, go to the backhand. Still got another break point though. Left. serve in the corner there. Enman scrambling it back and Sampras having to hit the ball behind him and hook it all the way into the corner. You know how disappointed Henman was. I think you're surprised at how well Sampras picked that one up. Sampras going for that sharp angled wide serve again. face if you serve to the forehand without making it really wide another break point is third Anyway, there, Sampras was quick enough, first of all, to get to the ball, and then second of all, just to put it wide enough and rush Henman into a, uh, into a weak back end. Yes, is that most of the errors now are all forced because they're both putting each other under such pressure.
Sampras. Two games on. You know what they say about when the going gets tough, and nobody tougher as a competitor than Mr. Sampras. He's proved it over six years. I've seen a bumper sticker saying that the going gets tougher, tough go shopping. <laughs> 15 minutes. Waiting for the call that never came. So his uh, seventh ace, Henman. Nasty when it's so easy to pull a muscle. Ball. And they've been playing now for exactly two hours. Sampras here for the 10th time and somewhat surprisingly only has he twice been in a final and only one one of them now you'd think that if the world's best player and he's been the best for six years was here he would probably on grass win the tournament yeah you would think so wouldn't you Boris Becker's been very successful over the years um, perhaps it just takes Sampras a while to get his rhythm um, he does serve volley reasonably consistently throughout the year. But, um, you know, now what he does is, because there's so few grass courts, um, grass court tournaments, that there aren't many grass court experts. These two guys, uh, two of the guys, I'd probably say maybe Krychek would be another one. After that, you're really starting to wonder um, if Anisovic, because of his serve, but not traditionally a grass court player, um, so I'd say Henman is always going to be a player who's going to get the jump on, on his opponents. 15 left. turning the tide on the far as returning in games are concerned. He is now the one who's consistently putting pressure on Sampras serve. He's had break points and close games. Oh. Little Sampras crack. Uh 
match, the quality of Henman's return will be sufficient. Without saying his and just forcing the errors. Yeah, that's definitely a long serve. Henman feels uh, been hard done by, and I've got to say, I think Sampras thought it was too. Um, watch the way Sampras hit that next volley. Didn't look like it was uh, expected to land all the end of see that many of those shots anymore. It's really spectacular sort of grass court gets that Boris Becker and various players used to do. Just flicks down the line. It's probably got to do with the fact that we don't play that much on grass anymore. It's harder to pass. Oh. Another string. Deuce. That was bad luck, wasn't it? Bad timing. Let the ball fly a little bit more, causing the double fault. Turn the straight open. A couple of years ago, Sampras broke. I gather he broke seven rackets, or seven strings in the warm-up before he got onto the court for his match. say that is the serve that certainly kept Sampras in this match. It's, he was missing a lot of those yesterday. The ones down the tee on the second court. Been very, very consistent. Oh, yes. Like that was a great adjustment. Ball coming right into him. It was quite a hard serve as well. 111 miles an hour. Right at his body. He had enough control over the head of the racket to be able to just fade it down the line. Again, Henman gets another first serve in under pressure. this well he loves to be around the net area where his touch can come into play feather like volley this
four games to three. And maintaining a very, very high level of serving again. No doubt joyous at the thought of the sun on his back. It certainly does make such a difference when you feel warm. And you feel everything begins to flow. And both players have flown, flowed today. Their games coming together just at the right moment, peaking for a great championship, is a secret you have to learn, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's, it's certainly it's something that that I I always focused on, and I had somehow I don't know had the ability to be able to to play well in the big tournaments. And a lot of it's got to do with uh, how, much, how much you play leading up to it, and um, uh, what I call tapering as well. And, uh, so you play a big five set tournament, you want to be fresh. Saturday and Sunday before the tournament. And we certainly went by Dr. Mark Philippoussis. He's stuck at the French Open by playing the final of the World Team Cup the two days before. Backwards, expecting the possibility of the lob. Reach to get that one easily. Double figures now, Sampras on serve. That ace coming at a moment which suggests that he's still deeply involved. Game yeah, Sampras. Great concentration there. Four games on. So no sign of slackening. Neither of them. And we're right at the business end of the set now. Oh. He's come out of those, those well every time by producing good first serves. Let's see what he can do this time. <laughs> played safely there. 15. Slowed the serve down a little bit. Got it into the body. Aiming into the body, of course, he's, he's not going to hit the ball wide. Going for the middle of the court, going to hit it long or short. Still in a bit of trouble there. Thirty. Time and again. 
again. He's produced the first serve. Great percentage from Henman in the set. like a volley that he missed the time he lost his serve in the second set so that was a very good one even though it was straight at him using the wrist to fade the volley wide Ben yeah. yeah. leads five games to four final set well, you asked the question, and Henman gave you the answer. He did come through, and he did put in some good first serves. And I think surely that is a sign of his growing maturity. Well, Tim's... I mean, I think most players, their, their first serve is so very, very important. It builds their confidence. And uh, for him to be able to, to come up with love 30 in two double faults, four first serves in a row, that is very good effort shows his confidence confident about his first serves he's now reapplied the pressure back onto Sampras Sampras is going to have to come out and serve to stay in the match and Henman's going to he's going to try like hell to get that first point the first point is time very very valuable at this end business end of the match Good today and was just missing yesterday. Down the center, lowest part of the net. More down to the T of the service box. Perhaps that might have been just a little bit deeper, but the anticipation was there. Henman guessed right and threaded the needle. Yeah. Yeah. Tell Sampras's concentration is a lot better today. He had a similar shot yesterday. Messed around with it. Hewitt, Leighton Hewitt scrambled the ball back when at one point, important point. This time Sampras just closes and knocks it away. Game Sampras. Five games on. It's a very good service game from Pete Sampras, and we've been in play now for exactly two hours and 18 minutes, equaling the time of the longest previous final. Becca Connors, 1987. These guys, Connors, of course, would stay back, so there'll be more rallies. Just shows how tight this match is. A lot of juice games. going crazy. I thought that ball landed in. The replay it looks like it was.
25. So this now does become the longest final in the 21 years of the Stella Artois Championships. And a very good one it is too. Wonderful level of play. Two men knowing their business on grass. And a good atmosphere here with this crowd. It's too close to pick a winner here. Because this is the moment when Sampras probably wished he could have achieved that second break of serve in the previous set that we spoke of at the time. Because Sampras has to play catch up all the time instead of serving first. And it does make a terrific difference, particularly on a court where the points are quick. Because if something goes wrong at the start of your service game, your opponent time. hits a really good return. You perhaps have a double fold or something, then you're in real shot. Absolutely in command here. And making good use of the new balls on serve. sort of return that Henman wants to show Sampras just before the tiebreaker. It goes that way. Just put a little fear into Sampras. Now that is too too many for comfort from anybody. Again, Sampras. Six games on final set tiebreak. So I think it's really quite fitting. There should be a tie break to decide it. Thank you. Because it's been that sort of a match. So close. Break, you've got to make everybody, every point count, make every return, pressure on the opponent. One on. Tim's saying, look, had it right there. Make the ball back. Crazy, incredible what pressure can do.
2-1, Sampras. second serve right on the line Sampras at first thought it was a fault as he missed his return and then a little nod of the head acknowledging the quality of the delivery so to all to the first tie break after one all Henman raced away for the next six points not this time little opportunity that's going to come up in this tiebreaker there's going to be one maybe one each somebody's going to have to grab it They're going to the lines on serve first, Hemman and now Sampras. Some great second serves out there. Key the serve volley. Grass is the second serve. Well, Sampras simply has to commit himself here. Whoa. It's a good defensive volley there by him, and all he could do is just pop. But look at this.
on the run up to Wimbledon, something he's done every year since 1991, but this was the first this year. So, psychologically, a tremendous step forward for Sampras. But Henman, well, full of praise for him, Tim. Uh, he has just played his heart out today. Doesn't become the first Briton since Bunny Austin in 1938 to win at Queen's, but so nearly. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our runner-up today, the magnificent Tim Henman. So, tremendous applause for a very brave fight from the British number one, who has failed to achieve what his challenger for honours in the home game, what Greg Rosetsky did in Paris last autumn when he beat Sampras for the first time, and tipped him so close today. So the applause here. And the 1999 Stella Artois champion, the best of the best, Pete Sampras. The applause here thoroughly deserved for one of the truly great players of this century. Royal Highness the Duchess of Gloucester, who is the patron of Vice Patron of Queen Stop. Going the honours. And the heaviest cup in tennis. Quite an ordeal to lift it. We've seen players struggle before. So he's got his name on that cup twice, along with some truly great names. John McEnroe, Jimmy Connors, Yvonne Lender, Boris Becker. And Henman can... Take comfort from the fact that he pushed the world number one to the very brink today. He covered himself in glory in the process. And that's nice. Sam for showing the trophy to the fans. Many of them with our cameras, they'll take home very happy memories of this visit to Queen's Club today. Frankly, I think that is exactly what <laughs> Sampras would have wanted to do, to peak at the right time just before Wimbledon. It was a marvellous performance indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, your appreciation for Tim Hanman and Pete Sampras. Pete, uh, congratulations, uh, your second Queen's title, but uh, our boy Hemman gave you some fight, didn't he? He sure did. Uh, he uh, is so strong. I mean, I really see him one day winning Wimbledon. Uh, and he's got a lot of talent, and I, you know, I think this country should be real proud of, uh, of Tim Hemman because he's, uh, he's going to be around for a lot of years. your first title of uh, 1999 uh, it's going to be good uh, coming into Wimbledon I certainly hope so uh, it's been you know my year hasn't been that great it's been a little bit up and down but uh, it's nice to be back on the grass back in London and, and hopefully I can uh, I can do it again this year serve was uh, firing uh, very very well today as well as the returns you must be very happy with that yeah this week uh, it was a struggle I, I got through yesterday's match seven six in the third and today seven six in the third and you know, my serve is, is the main part of my game, and uh, it was working today. But, but Tim, he was so close to beating me. He was one point away from, uh, from, uh, you know, from winning this title, and I just got a little bit fortunate today. You've played him five times. You've beaten him five times. Are you ever going to let him win? Um, <laughs> eventually, he will win. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, he's come close. I mean, I mean, today, like I said, he was one point away from beating me. And, you know, he's such a young guy, such a good attitude. I, I see him getting better and better as the years go on. Pete, thank you very much and good luck for Wimbledon. Thanks.